Well, hello, everyone. It's a concern, Dr. Miskoff. It's 11 p.m. on March 30th, 2020, and I'm back on the battlefields uh, at the hospital, and I also was able to go to the office today and experience from a provider standpoint uh, telemedicine for the first time. And the best thing about it was the waiting room, the virtual waiting room. Nobody's actually in your waiting room outside uh, in your office, but they're on a virtual waiting room and you can see their names and the amount of time that they've waited. And I got to tell you, nobody really gets upset that they haven't driven to the office and they're not waiting two hours in the waiting room. And sometimes I run that far behind and there's nothing more stressful when you're practicing and to know that you're making people wait that long. So even though it's 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 difficult to see all types of cases from pulmonary critical care sleep. Um, certainly the sleep patients was very convenient going over their CPAP studies and, and uh, their compliance. I did see a new uh, young in her 20s narcolepsy uh, patient today for my sleep practice. And um, it, was, it was great to not, uh, not be able to upset uh, patients and be able to say, hey, listen, uh, sorry we're running behind, uh, just keep sitting isolated anyway and we'll get to you in a few minutes and we'll text you and you'll get a link and kind of zoom into us. Uh, didn't use Zoom, it was a different one, doxy.me. I will talk more about telemedicine as time goes on. But uh, what I wanted to discuss tonight was, um, well, first I have to give you your fact of the night. And we're going to talk about plasma because I'm getting a lot of questions about plasma. And, uh, you know, a lot of patients are calling and asking and even healthcare providers, I think I had coronavirus. Yep. I uh, heard the symptoms, cough, I had aches, I had headaches, I had fever, I had nausea, I had um, you know, shortness of breath. I had one of those symptoms, two of those symptoms, multiple symptoms, and they're sure that they had it. I will tell you that the probability of them having it uh, a month or so ago was actually quite low. In fact, in a lab that's checking plasma, uh, or rather the antibodies uh, for uh, novel coronavirus, so uh, a lab in Idaho last week, I think for two days, checked healthcare providers, first responders or frontline providers, and even some of the public. I forget the exact end number, but I believe it was around one. 20-ish, uh, those, those people were tested and uh, only 7% had antibodies. So that tells us a couple things. Well, 7% is not a micro number, so the virus has been around a, a little bit, uh, although the antibody test can actually be detected about three days after uh, you had the initial symptoms, but it still suggests that you know this has been around for a certain amount of time because seven percent is not 0.7 percent. Uh, but still, you know, 93 percent of these people did not have antibodies, meaning that they likely did not have COVID-19. Um, so I would play it safe and say that you know you probably didn't have it. You could have had influenza, respiratory syncytial virus, metanumavirus, other coronaviruses. I certainly was finding all of that in the office over the last couple months in swabs and in the hospital when we swab for a test called the BioFire. Um, but now that we actually have the COVID uh, antibodies that can be tested, not commercially or readily available now, but at least in this Idaho lab, I believe there's 17 or so companies that have notified the FDA that they have antibodies, antibody tests uh, that also uh, they want to market at some point. Uh, but the fact of the night, uh, as we're talking about plasma, and we'll talk a little bit about treatment because that's also come up, is a uh, Nobel Prize winning German bacteriologist and physiologist Emil Adolf. Von Bering uh, used a syringe to inject a guinea pig held by a lab assistant in circa 1890. So uh, all the way back uh, then, uh, in fact, uh, they were already looking at the concept of convalescent plasma or getting the antibodies from people that have recovered or animal that have recovered and, uh, you know, being able to get those antibodies and potentially injecting uh, somebody or something with them for treatment. Uh, uh, Dr. Gallagher in 1930, uh, not our Dr. Gallagher, but a different Dr. Gallagher, um, actually did this with kids and measles and was able to cut the fatality rate of measles in half. You know, before they had vaccines, they had to play around with other things and taking plasma out of some uh, and, and taking those antibodies and neutralizing uh, infections uh, was uh, what they had at the time. Uh, for those who don't know, plasma is in fact the liquid form of the, the whole blood product. So they've removed the red cells, uh, been able to take out the red cells and the platelets. Uh, and again, those antibodies could be used. Uh, the way that they actually do the test for those antibodies is by using um, uh, antigens, uh, I think two or so from that. Uh, everybody's seen the picture of the coronavirus with the spikes on it. 
uh, the pretty uh, uh, spikes and those those uh, spikes actually um, are utilized uh, for the antigens and uh, being able to produce that test to check for the antibodies. Um, so if we can do a, a procedure called plasmapheresis and, and, and get the plasma uh, from patients who have con you know had uh, basically convalesced or have improved, uh, then then we will see what happens. I know they've looked at it in Ebola virus. Uh, I don't think with uh, too much success, but it's been utilized in uh, many other conditions, not just infections, uh, with success um, over the years. Uh, there was the Spanish flu that came in uh, the 20th century, 1918, 1920, and uh, this, uh, you know, it was utilized uh, in the in the Spanish uh, uh, flu as well. Um, and it was uh, effective in those patients who received it in the early uh, days of the infection. And then I mentioned uh, Dr. Gallagher and the measles. So I think those are all uh, you know questions that have come up. You probably haven't had uh, coronavirus, even though you, you think you had had it, just because the symptoms match. Uh, lots of things can cause those symptoms, uh, and it, it was more likely another virus, at least probably over 90%. Uh, with something else. So play it safe, social distance or physically distance still. Uh, I heard uh, today that the r -null, as I've talked about on other uh, vlogs, is uh, getting closer to the magic number. So we're getting closer to that one or less than one where a pandemic will uh, disappear and the curve will flatten out, uh, if not disappear completely, uh, once uh, we have it where one patient is infecting less than one patient. I heard a number about 1.4 today. I don't know if that is true or validated, but that would be a good thing, meaning that distancing is helping, but we're not quite there yet. So we're doing a, a good job, but we're not doing a great job. We need that number under one. Uh, I will admit I did go to Wegmans after work tonight at about 7 o'clock. I hit the Wegmans in uh, the Ocean Township area, and I was pleased with my mask and gloves on and a list of a short list of things to get in and get out uh, that it was pretty empty in there and fairly well stocked. I hope I didn't just ruin that golden egg, but uh, I was able to get everything that was requested from the home front. Uh, I went alone, a limiting amount of people in it. I mean, if you think about it, if uh, we did an equation and said that a C or coronavirus equals something where well, there's different variables and certainly the variables is how many people are, are there at one scene and how far you are and how infectious the, uh, the virus is. So if you start to eliminate those variables, you can eliminate the, the virus. So I keep the end number low, uh, just myself goes. I, my wife and son are locked in the house, not allowed out. And I will uh, be the one that's exposed by myself. Why take two or three people up to the supermarket? Totally unnecessary. And, um, uh, you know, you want to be as far apart. I had my gloves on. I had my wipes with me and wiping down the cart. Uh, at work today, I was wiping down every station. We have to do our part to minimize exposure. And who knows who's a asymptomatic carrier? So you have to be you have to be safe. Uh, but it looked like at least tonight that it was quiet in there. I was able to keep 15 feet from everybody, if not more, and get my stuff, get out. And uh, I saw many people wearing masks and gloves and using sanitizers, and it was a good thing. Uh, I still think that we should have locked everybody in for two or three weeks and had the National Guard have all these restaurants that are going, you know, having trouble, uh, cook all this food and in individually wrapped type of things and just drop it off at our front door. Uh, I'm not so sure that that would have uh, cost less than $2.1 trillion, but it very well could have and kept all these, these restaurants moving. But, you know, I'm not a politician. I'm just a doc. And with that, I will say have a great night. Everybody be safe. And... Uh, who knows what we'll talk about next, but I will keep the uh, questions coming in and I'll try and answer as most of you, as many of you as I can. And uh, again, please stay safe. Thank you. Good night.